Hi everyone, my name is Ryan Robitaille and today I want to give a quick run through of the first alpha of Data Rabbit, which is a project I've been working on for quite some time. Um, it's a flow based closure and closure script um, eval REPL canvas essentially um, that allows different pieces of code to be executed in a visual, you know, canvas card environment and then linked together to pass data from block to block and then those blocks can be composed together in another block for presentation purposes. Um, it's, it sounds a lot more complicated than it, it kind of is. So let me just kind of go through it here. So here we have um, my, my, you know, small screen for my site here for downloading it. Um, and here you have the canvas. The canvas has this on it, its pieces, as well as some other things we'll get to in a second. Um, so first of all, the navigation. So spacebar uh, toggles panning and zooming. Um, I, you know, I, I've been a gamer for a long time and my left hand like sits on WASD spacebar and shift. So that's going to come up a lot in these keyboard commands. So just, uh, just a, as a heads up. So, you know, space toggles the zoom. Then if I have shift W toggles this top panel, um, the top panel has what flows we're looking at. Um, you can rename the file or rename the flow we're looking at, uh, you know, toggle that. Um, shift S and all these are in here in the docs shift S toggles the bottom panel which is basically you know you want to save the file um, and these over here are actually little helpers to show you what panels are enabled and, and not enabled um, we go to shift Q is kind of the file and flow browser again I'm going through this quickly but there's a much longer video on this that I'll post I'll post later uh, shift F is kind of preview so this is the preview of the currently selected block, which in this case would be the website, this composer block that I have all these other things inside. And then let's get rid of this. Shift A uh, toggles the palette. And this is, you know, what can we add to the flow? Uh, if I wanted to add another block here, for example, I would drag it from this panel here. Uh, this toggles that. Let's select this guy over here and then finally shift D toggles the editor panel which we'll go into in a second uh, it's basically the the code of what we're looking at as well as its output and various other things which we'll, we'll get to so so that's that's the WASD uh, uh, panel circus all right so speaking of the panel and the editor all right let's talk about data types uh, you know closure to dynamic language language obviously but it's kind of important when you have a bunch of stuff flowing around that you know what it is. So I kind of have this system of where depending on what the output of the block is, the color, you know, obviously this is a map, so it's pink, um, strings are yellow, vectors are blue, you know, we'll, we'll see more of this, but it's, it's very, um, it's very specific about these colors and you see those, these colors come up in a lot of places. Um, this is a row set, which is, you know, not a real data type, but essentially, you know, uniform maps in a vector, um, comes up a lot making visualizations. So I, I, I included it, um, you know, lazy float list keyword. You can see I have a different color for everything and it stays very consistent through the app. So back to the editor. So here we have a map. Um, a kind of a messy, goofy map that you might encounter somewhere, or maybe not if you're lucky. Um, and you can see here, here's my code window, and here is a, a window called out auto. It basically looks at the data coming out of the, the code and renders it in a way that it, it thinks is most, you know, helpful. Um, also, if I wanted to look at just the text, I could say text, but in this case, it's just a map, so it's obviously the same as the, uh, same as the code. Um, but in this case, it's rendering it as a recursive, you know, data structure, which can be really helpful in seeing, you know, what you're looking at, especially with things. I mean, this is kind of a, you know, you know a nested goofy thing. Um, but what makes this even better is that I can also say, hey, this is my map that came in from another piece, another piece of the application. And I want to say, OK, well, this this string four. I mean, this is what I really want from an application. I can just say, OK, let's grab that key and we'll drag it out here. Okay, four, and like, all right, I want this, I want this yes vector, I'm gonna drag this out here. Uh, which, so it's a simple, you know, it's generating a simple get in from the block previous to it, but just really handy in getting stuff done and not having to, you know, type a bunch of stuff. 
And as you can see, you know, these are both maps, so they both have the uh, the map coming in and then being dissected here with the uh, get in. Um, you can see the the line here for the flow is map because that's what it's sending. So see, I hover. What's coming in is map. What's coming out is a string that says four here. You know, what's coming in is a map. What's coming out is this vector. Um, I can even take it a step further and say, okay, from here, I just want this string. So passing the map to this block and from this block, plucking the vector to this block and then me pulling out the nested string to get yes true. So that's kind of neat. Let me just get rid of these boxes here. Uh, shift delete also gets rid of them. Here we have just a regular old string. Nothing too interesting there. Um, this is all running on bootstrapped um, closure script, obviously. Um, the the non-hosted version, meaning the, the jar you download on the website, um, also allows nREPL, like actual closure REPL connections, not just closure script. But in this case, this is my site, and I, you know I can't be I can't be hosting some open REPL. Anyways, so here's an interesting object or interesting data type, um, render object, right? So essentially, it's something that is you know compiled closure script that renders on the screen which you know is important if you're making dashboards and stuff um the cool thing about this is that when i drag out of these blocks uh, by default it sends itself right so if i drag out here I, I get the same thing um and that might not seem very interesting but it's not passing the code and re-executing it right it's passing the the uh compiled um, closure script to, to run again. And that, that can come in handy in a lot of places. So let me just refer to that. So we have the editor. Basic, um, basic as it is, but there's a couple hidden tricks here. Um, number one, it'll, it will evaluate anything that you select and right click. So for example, uh, range seven here, if I right click, I see range seven is a list of zero through six, cool. Um, if I go, you know, obviously if I select the whole thing and execute it, I see my zero through six boxes. Cool. On top of that, it also understands pixel numbers, integers, floats, uh, and several other CSS type things. So I can also say, you know, Hey, let's, uh, let me format this. I can say, instead of range seven, maybe I want to say, all right, we're doing range 50 or, you know, we'll go down to range three and you can see as I as I scrub through here it gets re-executed and changes in the block so I can kind of like see what you know feels right uh, Brett Victor has a bunch of great videos about this uh, uh, essentially direct manipulation of of you know values just so you can don't have to hunt and pack and you can kind of feel what what you need you know what feels good for you artistically right and this applies to lots of things you know obviously you know the width you know it understands the key pairings and the pixel values, um, you know, height, same thing. Um, color, obviously, you got to have a uh, color picker. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so kind of interesting. This, for example, this is interesting because this is uh, allows me to pick a different font. Um, but what's great about this is that this isn't hard coded in the application. If I wanted to add another, so so uh, basically I selected a key pairing, right? Um, font family has this. Um, if I want to select another, you know, make my own, I could um, excuse me, go back here. I could create my own pairings, right? So if I want a key that says emergency fruit to give me these values as a drop down when I select and evaluate them, I I could do that. Anyways. Moving on, um, uh, row set type, uh, very helpful, uh, renders into V table. So we have lots of rows. It, it doesn't chug the, uh, chug the browser down at least, at least as much as it, as it can, you know, browsers have a pretty limited, uh, you know, you can't load them up with, you know, thousands and thousands of rows. Um, but thankfully it's usually aggregated down to something for a viz or whatnot. All right. So let's talk about input and output. I kind of showed you here with the, um, map pulling that you know when i see something it's very 
tied to where it came from and the thing it came from knows where it's going, obviously. So we can get a real good idea of what's going on at the edges of these blocks as much as possible. Let me go to something a little more fun. So this is this API I found that basically has, um, for every time Owen Wilson has said, wow, in a movie. So I, I do the first call, I, I pull in the list of movies, um, and then I make that uh, a change in Adam uh, to go to this one. Actually, I don't change in Adam. I, I push it out um, um, explicitly. So I can say, you know, Shanghai Noon, and it changes the secondary call, you know, with Shanghai Noon, and then sends out this ugly ass map, which I dissect into, you know, these different things, uh, you know, whatever. If there's if there's more than one, wow, <laughs> they'll, they'll show down here uh, with the picture. Um, nothing too exciting, but the cool thing about stuff like this is that, you know, with this one complex map, I can then pull it into several pieces and then use those pieces in a more um, cohesive, you know, uh, presentation layer if I want to. And, and again, before somebody comes in and says, oh, this is like inefficient because you're doing all these things and you're repeating stuff. And uh, I mean, like, you know, I have the videos down here. Oh, the Metallica videos are only there because uh, they're placeholders for this video I'm recording now. So, <laughs> but you could say, oh yeah, you're repeating code and whatever. And like, yes, that's true. I mean, you could take one block and write all this in one block and it would be fine and it would probably execute faster. But one of the things I love about this platform kind of thing is that, you know, if I'm, if I'm doing data exploration or creating a dashboard or, or doing something, a lot of times you really want to see the breadcrumbs, you know, and if it makes it a tad bit slower, but me or someone who uses the, you know, uses my flow can go in and see exactly where the data flows from and like what was going on and what my kind of thought process is. Um, like that, that understandable complexity, I think sometimes is way better than a just, um, you know, pages and pages of code or, you know, a mountain of Tableau calculations or, or, or what have you. Like there's so much stuff gets lost in those, you know, in those in, in those piles of things, you know, are the piles of logic we use to make things work, right? If we could make the logic a bit more obvious, then I think um, we increase the understandability of our output. And for me as a data guy, dashboard guy, that's one of the most important things I do is that, you know, is this understandable to somebody else? And then can they figure out where and why it comes from, right? So as a slightly more complicated example, here's um, some data on Bigfoot sightings over the years. Have a list of states and then i can select you know a state it goes in it filters the um this is just basically an edn file since obviously i don't have sql connection here on my on the on the dot com um basically you know filters out from the certain state and then from this single data set it sends that to these other blocks which then break it down in their own ways you know this was just a, a, a you know you know, get in first. This was, you know, summing up um, a single field. This is me concatenating those two things together uh, with a little bit of like recom like hiccup. Um, and, and you're kind of creating this map of what's going on, you know, so as I change this, obviously not a ton of data, because like I said, I don't have JDBC SQL access um, on this platform, but the one that you download will uh, another cool thing is that, so these, these things were created by dragging and dropping also. So if I see that, if I click here, I get the clicked out, um, by default, they, it creates an atom, which sends out, um, to the on click event, which can be really useful, especially if you have, like, if I wanted, for example, this 2000 to populate an atom and then atom also overrides the selection here, like for example, so there's two of these class B 2022, right? If I click here and I can see that it filtered the main source to be two, the two I'm looking for and changed all these downstream um, visits. And then if I just select it twice again, it goes back to nothing. Um, again, a really small example, but, but kind of kind of the cool little little things you can do. Um, here's the website of the, where I got all this esteemed information. Um, so this is more um, more imperative for the, um, the, the the actual closure NREPL version, 
But as I said, these, these graphs, um, I did not hand code these uh, in this instance. So let me give you an example of that. Let me take this data set and let me drag one over here, which like I said earlier, uh, dragging it just creates a copy of itself. Um, it's small. Uh, let's go here. All right. So here we have the data set and here we have what it is. It's basically just passing itself from its source into this block. Um, what we can do here is uh, obviously I can click and unclick rows, um, but I have this special panel here that says clicked row, which basically gives me uh, some shortcuts for generating uh, some code. Um, not, not trying to generate the most efficient or best code, but like get me to the next step of what I'm trying to solve and then I can go back and I can tailor it to how I want. You know, I love the idea of getting shit done quickly uh, and then being able to tweak it. You know, um, So the basis of all these blocks, regardless of whether they're generated by a drag and drop action or anything, is, is the code. Uh, so uh, single ops, um, asterisks, you know, I can count the rows because that's a common thing, not really interesting. But if I click on a row, it now knows what fields we have and the data types, etc. So I have a lot more single ops available now that I clicked on it, you know, fixed year, I have filters, distinct vector, I could say, create a drop down, uh, give me a frequency, um, like season, you know, I can, I can pull out frequency. And boom, there's a, you know, you know, there's, there's a count by frequencies. Uh, again, just trying to get you to that next step. There's another tab called aggregate, which basically takes um, the data and re-aggregates it by something. You know, in this case, we wanted to just let's say I want I want to count the rows, um, group by season, uh, and sort by season. Uh, this is mostly used for you know post SQL aggregations. Uh, in this example, it's not quite great because there's not a whole lot of data here. Um, but you know, I could re-aggregate that. Gets me another row set with, you know, uh, those pulled up. And then I can say, all right, well, let me bring, let me look click row again. Let me look at this row set. So this time I want to go to the data viz layer and this is kind of what I want, right? So I want season as my X and I want count summed up as the Y and make that a bar chart. Cool. So now I have my bar chart and I have this uh, Nevo uh, code here that I then can start playing with and doing, you know, doing what I want with it. You know, maybe I want to go down here and say, where is it? Axis bottom. Maybe I want to like, I want to like, I want to rotate those around if they, in case they don't fit. And maybe I just want to, you know, move this up a bit so I can see the, 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 the header a little bit. Um, now maybe I want this to be horizontal because I had previously said, you know, I, I previously put into the key value thing that layout horizontal, you know, layout can be horizontal or vertical, but you, you can kind of get, get where I'm going here, right? Um, let's see, let's go back here and let's say I want season. Um, let's go to bad of his. I want, uh, yeah. All right, so we're going to do sightings, sum, uh, season as X, class as color, and I want a heat map. Again, nothing spectacular, but you can see if I'm going through some data and trying to build some rudimentary understanding of the data, this this can be quite helpful. And again, I can go in and change this whatever I want. You know, um, this just gets me a starting point. Um, anyways, more about that in the uh, official in the the larger uh, slide deck closure video coming up. I just I, when I was editing this, I realized that I forgot this piece. So. If we want to compose this stuff together as a dashboard, um, this is a, just a really quick example I, I threw together. Um, so this is all those parts together in this composed manner, right? I can change it here, same thing. Again, like I said, we're double rendering a little bit, but in some ways, like this is worth it. Um, not to mention I haven't really done performance pass on any of this stuff. Uh, so there's a lot of low hanging fruit that I, I need to get to, but you know, for alpha one, I think we're in a decent place. Um, and what's great about this view composer, this is a certain block type, right? Is that, so this composer isn't code, you know, it's essentially me saying, hey, these are all the pieces that I want. You know, I want to put the header in here and I want the drop down in here. 
and then being able to say, all right, well, let me see the header. And then I have it in floating mode, so I can go over here to the header and say, all right, well, let's move that where we want. You know, maybe I want to put the header in the bottom. And then, boom. And it allows me to kind of compose all these blocks in whatever way I want to. So when I present this, um, it, it's, it's, it's separating that kind of composition from what it is that the bar does, right? Like, I don't know necessarily that all this stuff is connected together from here, but if I look at the canvas, I can certainly see how, you know, this, this Georgia string goes through and eventually makes it to, you know, this uh, small time series here, right? So same thing, it operates the same way as the canvas. You know, there's six here in 2011, I click it, and there's the six. And I go back to maybe. All right, so that's cool. Let's do one more thing. Uh, so anyone who's familiar with Brett Victor will, will recognize this. Uh, his tree is much better, but this is, um, you know, the same principle as before, right? Um, this is a canvas tree drawing um, hooked up to a bunch of atoms that are controlled by, you know, um, color palettes and, and uh, sliders. Um, as you can see at the top part here, all these atoms. And as I, as I scrub over the atoms, you know, it shows which one it is and where it's coming from. And then I can go right to them, you know, change it, and it, it, it updates um, various things, scale, uh, you know, changing the end, end of the branches. Um, and then I can, you know, I could just as easily not have these sliders and just done it all in, in app here, right? Like if I want to say, uh, let's see here. Let's where's draw blossom. Yeah. So for the alpha of the blossoms, you know, I could just directly manipulate the code and, you know, change the alpha, alpha up and down or, you know, change the, uh, you know, the, the um, boundaries of the size, you know, um, all kinds of stuff. And, you know, this is, a, this is more of the direct manipulation example, but kind of a cool one. Um, anyways, uh, I'm doing a longer video that's going to go more into the server aspects of this, like I said, of having a... Um, you know, connecting this to uh, arbitrary closure script and REPL. So you can do things like Incantor or, you know, TechML data set or like that kind of stuff and like kind of bridge the gap between closure and closure script in this like flowy kind of canvas way. Um, but I'm going to end this one here, just try to keep it quick. So if anyone stumbled upon this site and is like, what in the holy hell is this thing? Uh, hopefully this video uh, helps a little bit. Um, as anyways, if you're, if you're interested, please download it, check it out. Uh, please watch the other video because I'm going to go through a slide deck. I know, it's sexy, right? I'm going to go through a slide deck about some of these features in, in slightly more detail. Um, and yeah, hit me up with feedback, criticism, anything. Um, you know, it's a, it's a labor of love. And uh, yeah, I mean, all good. Anyways, thanks everyone. Cheers.